Um, hi, my name is Julia Ehrman. I work at Transit Center, which is a foundation dedicated to improving public transit um, all over the country. We're based in New York, and um, this is Who Rules Transit. So first, uh, we'll take a look at the New York City MTA board. This is from their website. These are all of our 23 board members. As you can see, there are three women, three people of color. One of them is both, so that leaves um, five people who are not white men on this 23-person board. Um, this is true at a lot of agencies around the country. We took like a very kind of simplistic look at board demographics compared to transit um, service area residents and transit riders in, in major cities around the country, and we found that overall um, there are a lot of places where white men are very overrepresented on their transit boards and um, not overall who's riding transit. So transit riders are mostly women, people of color. Um, this is, um, I'm just gonna go through these slides really quickly. On the top, you can see the board demographics and then you have transit riders and then service area residents. So this is Houston by um, racial demographics, um, gender. This is VIA, which is the transit agency in San Antonio. Um, it's actually okay by um, gender. This is MARTA in Atlanta, similar, not very good. Um, this is TriMet in Portland. We're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about Portland. This um, is the board demographics before a recent change. Um, to, they had a, a bunch of new board members appointed uh, before this, after this chart was made. Um, but you can see it's, it's pretty representative, but it's a very white city, so the board is also very white. Not very good on gender. Um, this is Boston, where we are. This chart looks a little bit different because, as many of you I'm sure know, the MBTA is governed by two boards, the MassDOT board, which is the state agency, and the Fiscal and Management Control Board, which was uh, formed after a crisis in 2015 and will sunset eventually, but is also appointed by the governor. And you can see that neither board is representative of the transit riders in Boston. So uh, Fiscal, Man Fiscal Management Control Board is five members, uh, one of them is not a white man. <laughs> uh, this is also true kind of throughout agency staff and especially in the highest ranks of transit agencies. We looked at the top 20 transit agencies by ridership in the country and three of them are led by women. This is just like an email screenshot. Um, <laughs> also true throughout uh, agency staff, although this is a little bit harder to measure, in Minneapolis they did measure it and they found um, that while the workforce overall in transit agencies is, is pretty diverse, um, people who do, who work on policy and planning and in sort of central offices making decisions about how transit actually runs are um, also mostly white men. <laughs> So um, I'm going to talk about an example in Portland of advocacy that really made an impact on this problem. We are joined tonight by Orlando Lopez of Opal, so I just want to shout out to him. Um, he's responsible for this victory, but I'm going to talk about it briefly. Um, so his organization is a grassroots organization, um, environmental justice group. They protested the hiring of a new CEO this year at TriMet um, on the grounds that they wanted the agency to have a more accountable process and consider more um, candidates who are women and people of color. Um, and the reason for that is that they do grassroots roots organizing, so they talk to transit riders all day about what matters to them, and they didn't um, believe that the agency was sufficiently considering um, candidates who would, who would um, take those issues into account. Um, so the issues that they work on are uh, many things, but including um, issues that may be familiar to people who talk about, who work on transit, um, lack of service in low-income communities of color, uh, the need for a reduced fare for low-income riders and youth, demilitarization, decriminalization of fare enforcement, and increased accountability at the agency in general. Um, so they were concerned that the, that the candidate and the person who was hired would not be, um, suffi be an advocate for these issues. Um, they were not able to prevent the hiring of the CEO, though they did stall it, but they were successful in that they got the attention of the governor, who this year was able to appoint three new members to the TriMet board, which really changed the composition of the board, and also these are not only 
people of color, but also people who have um, backgrounds in community service and um, have proven to be advocates already on the board. So recently at a hearing, um, Kathy Y, who was recommended by Opal for the board, um, was the sole no vote on um, a decision about a new fair enforcement policy that she was concerned would um, impact uh, communities of color in a negative way, and she was also supported by new board members in dissenting and changing the way that the conversation ab around those policies um, in the boardroom. So changing representation on the boards can actually have really important impacts on policy. Um, what else could change? Did I miss something? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, some issues that might be affected by this. Uh, we might have, if we had more transit riders serving on boards, we might have more off-peak service, uh, easier multi-leg trips for people making non nine to five commute uh, transit trips, free transfers, family friendly fares, more lighting, visibility, and real time information at bus stops, um, more bus service, maybe less expensive rail projects built at the expense of that, um, non-discriminatory fare enforcement. I'm sure you can think of other things that might be affected by having transit riders in decision making positions. Um, so some ways that we're making progress, um, and mu there's ad advocates at make, trying to push to have transit riders um, in leadership positions, trying to push for accountability. Also, this is a picture from um, a workshop that was held after LA Metro, which is the regional transit agency in Los Angeles, announced that they are building a boarding school to train youth, low-income youth of color, to um, be prepared to enter the transit workforce. They're they're hiring a lot of people, um, and they're gonna they're gonna um, actually train them. Um, other initiatives, there's other kinds of training programs that agencies run themselves. Um, we've learned about ways that they people that agencies can remove remove barriers for women, like height and weight requirements that just cut people out. Um, lots of ways to make change, but I will leave you with um, a question: What can you do? Um, so. I think all of this speaks to the importance of getting other voices in the room, and advocates do that, and you can also do that by participating with your advocacy organizations and also just telling your elected officials and your transit agency leaders what you experience on transit because they might not be writing it, 